Back in August, Celtic and Hearts opened the new SPFL season. As Celtic raised the flag, they raised the bar, continuing their invincible run for Hearts. It's been a palpitating drama. In recent weeks, they've been in more stable condition. They're back home, they've rallied well in consecutive victories. They now sit in the top half of the table. But are they strong enough to take on the rampant boots? A warm welcome to Tynecastle Park with his Ladbrokes SPFL fixture. It's the champions who arrive in Edinburgh today, hoping to continue a 100% success record under Brendan Rodgers. Celtic's lead at the top. Well, that was cut yesterday with Aberdeen beating Hibs. And, of course, a Hearts victory today would put them just a win away from their Edinburgh rivals. Well, here it has been something old, something new, something borrowed and something, well, maroon. It's been quite the frustrating season uh, watching Hearts, but they could really take something from trying to stop the Invincibles, who seem to be the unbreakables in their tracks. Right, let's get straight to it. Gents in the studio, going to start with uh, Chris Boyd, summing up what Craig Levine has done and his, his achievements since returning to football here. It's been a difficult situation for Craig. You know, he was the director of football under Robbie Nielsen, and it was a success. You know, they were a, they were a very, very good outfit in the championship. They came up, and you, and you thought that Hearts would push on from there. You know, it's not quite materialised like that. Um, you know, the first season under Robbie when they came up, they did. Um, and, but Robbie obviously left to go to MK Dons. Um, and then since that, you know, there's it's, it's been here, there, and everywhere. To be honest, you know, the, the Ian Cathro experiment didn't work. Um, you know, and Craig Levine had put all his eggs in one basket with that, um, and he's now found his, his self back in the hot seat. And, yeah, you know, there's a lot of people, myself included, have you know <laughs> had a pop up and everything. But there's one thing about Craig: his teams are organised, they're hard to break down, and you've seen that as soon as I've came back to, to Tynecastle. Yes, they might not have been winning as many as they wanted, but as I said, they're undefeated in five at home. Bearing in mind that the season that they've had, Chris Combs, what would bring a smile to the faces of the fans here? Well, a win would certainly <laughs> lift the spirits here. But just picking up on what Chris said there, mm. they have been pretty hard to beat. I mean, I think there's only a Celtic in the league that's kept more clean sheets than them. It's been to get the ball in the back of the net, that's been the main problem. I think they've only scored 17 goals this season, which is a real worry. And when you're coming up against a Celtic team that doesn't really concede many goals, it's going to be a, a tough test for Hearts today. Right, well, let's show you how these two sides line up this afternoon. Craig Levine has made seven changes from Tuesday's win here against Dundee. Gotham Randall, Captain Bearer and Prince Bowman retain their places. Jamie Brandon, he's back from suspension at the back up front. Uh, there's Carl Lafferty and a start for teenager as well, Harry Cochran. As for Celtic, main news is that Lee Griffiths makes a start. He's a boyhood Hibs fan, of course. He's one of Rogers' four changes. Also coming into the side, Lustig, Simonovic, Tierney. And with Aya Bitten, Edward and Armstrong all dropping out of the side that beat Hamilton midweek. I don't know if we were expecting as many changes for Craig Levine. Is that a worry or a concern, or are the positives to be drawn from that? There's a few of them being forced on him. You know, Suter's obviously uh, suspended. He'll be a big miss, I think, you know, because him and Berra have been you know, pretty rock solid at the back for, for, um, for Hearts this season. You at least know what you're going to get. So there'll be a big bonus on whoever goes in there at centre half. Um, there's a Smith from the full back area tucking in there. We don't know. We'll need to wait and see um, once the game kicks off. But, mm. you know, there's definitely a big bonus on Christoph Berra today. Yes, he's a captain. He's played every game this season. Um, and he's He's not going to get a bigger challenge than this. Um, you know, the, the only thing for, for me would be can Calvez missing out? He's a joint, joint top goal scorer with, with, with Lafferty. Um, where are the goals going to come from? We spoke about the lack of goals. Um, when you leave it, your joint top goal scorer in the league, um, you know, it's very difficult. But I'd expect um, Hearts to be 4-5-1, four, four, very solid and, and hard to beat and, and hopefully um, can hit Celtic on the break and get something that way. OK, we mentioned one of the young players, 16-year-old, born in 2001, when Craig Levine was actually his first spell as a Hearts manager. He replaced Ian Cather at the end of August. And his team has actually won more than he's lost this season. His win percentage, though, is lagging slightly from his uh, first spell in charge. Uh, here he is with Luke Shanley. 
Craig, how do you go about being the first team to beat Celtic in the 69 game run? Um, I've talked to you about that after the game. <laughs> um, we, we've got a number of problems injury wise, and, and when I looked at the, the squad, um, I think to, to sit and defend for 90 minutes is probably beyond us with the players that we have available. So uh, we'll have a go and see what happens. You mentioned about the youngsters and whether to chuck them in or not. Harry Cochrane does start. How confident are you that, that he'll be able to, to uh, rise to the occasion? Yeah, it's a stretch, but um, yeah, he's certainly not let us down so far. Um, Lewis Moore, unfortunately, he's got a, a calf strain that, which he picked up um, uh, at the game during the week there. So, I mean, he's, uh, he's toiling a little bit, which is unfortunate because uh, he'd been doing particularly well. I just felt Anthony had uh, played for 90 minutes the other night and uh, I thought it was a, quite a big step. He's been out for a fair period of time this year with injury, so I thought it was a big step to throw him in again. Uh, today, so um, yeah, I mean, I've been pleased with them, but uh, Harry's the only one that's starting today. Are you pleased in terms of the form now? A couple of wins back at Tynecastle as well. How beneficial has that been? We're, we're slowly getting there. Um, defensively, we've been excellent. Um, it's going forward that we've had most of our problems, and uh, you know, I'm hoping that you know, although it's going to be difficult, Celtic will push us back. But our intention today is to try and take the game to them. Good luck. Thank you very much. Well, Craig Levine has given senior debuts to four teenagers throughout the season so far. Uh, how positive is this, actually? He has been thrown into making these decisions, but to see the, the youth and the development coming through and, and, and really pushing through this well, squad... There's one thing about Hearts over the years. You know, you go back right back to the 80s, you know, they put Gary Mackay in, they put John Robertson in, you then go into the 90s, Gary Naismith, Gary Locke, um, the 90s, Craig Gordon, um, you know, Lee Wallace, and then even recently as well, you know, there's Jamie McDonald as well, there's another, another one. Um, you know... Hearts have always been a club who have relied on youth coming through and they've got a very, very good mm. youth uh, structure in place there that gives them the opportunity to do this. So, yes, it can be difficult sometimes, but, you know, these young guys, there's what, um, the, the, the ones who are, who are involved today, um, you know, it's a great occasion to play against, against Celtic in your home patch, um, working ever so hard behind the scenes to get the opportunity to do that. You know, as we say, Craig has been probably forced to put a lot of them in um, because of injuries and, and what's going on with about um, Tynecastle right now. But, you know, if they weren't good enough, they wouldn't, you know, it would turn to somebody else. The other thing for me with, with Hearts, you know, a lot of teams don't do it. They get the youngsters out until the, you know, the, the, the first division, the second division. They get them, they get them out and they get them um, first team experience mm. at a lower level. So that's a positive as well. As for Harry Cochran's comments, he's played seven first team games already. He has faced the likes of Hibs and Rangers. How much of a step up will this challenge be? Yeah, this will be the, his biggest test. Uh, I think after the game, Craig Levine admitted that he should have started this game against the Burnley and he thought he, he made the difference when he came on. And he's clearly got more to his game than just tackling, getting his head up and making short passes. He does like to break forward, he's got a change of pace, he looks to try and get goals as well. So he's one of the very few all-round midfielders. But for me, we watched him against Rangers at, uh, at this stadium here and I was disappointed. I thought he, he, he gave the ball away cheaply, he looked a little bit out of his depth. So if that's in his mind in a game like today, it's going to be a real, real big test. It's really important in that midfield zone that they do keep the ball, as Chris spoke yeah. about there. You know, when it, when it does go away, but you know, McDonald here as well. You know, he, he's, a, he's a young guy who came in um, on, on Tuesday night and done ever so well. You know, yes, he's unfortunate to miss out today, but it is a big ask to go for 90 minutes on mm. Tuesday. And as you know, as Craig touched upon there in his, his interview, but you know, he set up the goal during the week, and you can see, you know, the amount of positive balls he's put in the, the box here. If, if Hearts were going to get success during the week, you felt as if it was going to come from him. You know, picking the ball up, driving at the, mm. the heart of defences. This is a great little pass through. You know, if it had been on the ground, it probably wouldn't have got there. You know, so the awareness to, to at least lift it over the defender to get it through there, and it's a great assist uh, for Concalves. Yeah, well, he was one of the standout performers midweek here in that uh, win, and uh, how the fans here would love to see Hearts get a win today and uh, end. Somebody's got to do it, haven't they? The Invincibles runner. The atmosphere is certainly set to be bouncing. Two wins in three days. Things are looking good. The £12 million stand is very impressive indeed.
we will have action and goals from the weekend's games on Monday night in SBFL Roundup Show from 10 o'clock on Sky Sports Football. On the same channel next Friday, the first of two SPFL specials. Neil Lennon, Barry Ferguson join Chris Commons and Chris Boyd looking forward to the up-and-coming Old Firm game with memories of previous famous meetings. Every time we pulled up at Ibrox on the plane, there's something in Arsenal would say about you sit here and wait for us to get off because they just wanted to hear the reception that I was going to get. The next thing you'd hear me coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy it? I loved it. Uh, yeah, it was the same when we used to go up at Celtic Park. So many guys used to get about, but as soon as you, you walk out because you're a local boy, it was just oh, absolute dogs abuse. But I enjoyed it. Yeah. I had to walk out. You, Shoulders up, exactly. chest puffed. You get disappointed if you didn't get any. No, abuse, no, that, you? that's when you start to worry. You don't <laughs> yeah, get them. You don't care about it. <laughs> so I'm still getting on the street and, and wherever I go. Yeah, certainly something to look forward to after uh, the Christmas blues kick in building up to the new year. Now, Brendan Rodgers actually started his managerial career in the Premiership against Hearts. He's won all five of his encounters in what have been very memorable games. Breaking those hearts there, and he's managed some landmark games against them. He's yet to drop a point against Hearts. He'll be hoping this trend continues this afternoon. Here he is with Luke Shanley. Brendan, what sort of challenge do you expect today? Well, they're always tough games. Um, you know, the Hearts uh, be Celtic here at Tynecastle. So uh, we had two really good games here last season. Um, tough games, and obviously the second game result was was better, but. We always have to earn the right here. They were landmarks for you. You could make another landmark today, the club going 70 unbeaten potentially. What would that say and what sort of an achievement would that be? Well, of course, it's an amazing level of consistency by the players and epitomises, I suppose, what, they, what they've been doing every single day, not just in the game. So, um, But really, our thoughts are just on getting three points in the game and then whatever the consequence of that is, then we'll, we'll, we'll accept that. Lee Griffiths is back in today. It's his second start in 11 games. Do you expect a, a motivated Lee Griffiths out to, to prove a point that he should be in the team all the time? No, listen, I think all the players are always having to prove that they can play and, and be in the team. I think that's. I think you, you have to consider the number of games that we have, and and I think what we've done in this last couple of months is we've gained a, a young striker and, and young Odson who's who stepped up and now he's settled in and uh, he's been absolutely brilliant. So, um, But what we now have is three really hungry strikers uh, who can then come in and they know when they come in they've got to perform to stay in the team and that's firstly defensively and then obviously if they can get the goals then, uh, then great. Good luck. Pleasure, thank you. Yeah, real battle for places. The competition there is quite exciting. Maybe not so if you are Lee Griffiths, but why do you think he has brought him in for this game? I think it's a perfect game to bring Lee Griffiths in. Obviously, with his hips connection, it's an ideal game for him to go out there and prove Brendan wrong that he should be starting every single week. And listen, Lee would love to play every single game, but the fact of the matter is he's playing in a really good Celtic team, which Brendan can rotate, and the people that come in are just as good. So it's, it's a difficult one, but a game that will it thrive on this sort of atmosphere, so I'm expecting a big performance from him. And he, always seems to do well against, well. he always seems to do well against Hearts as well. Yeah. I think he's four goals in his last four games against them. So, you know, as a striker, you always get teams where you seem to score against, and you know, Hearts is one of those ones for, for yeah. Lee. Um, so he'll be looking forward to this. Yes, he'll get stick, but you know, Lee Griffiths is somebody who thrives on the stick from the home fans, and I wouldn't be surprised if he finds the net today again. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's uh, bring you some more stats, uh, impressive stats, on a man who also made his Premiership debut in this fixture as a sub last August. Celtic's top scorer, Scott Sinclair, has 15 goals this season, eight in the league, and against Hearts, he scored seven goals in his five winning appearances. Sinclair waiting! That's the way to announce your arrival! I think that's where it all started. Just the fact that I wasn't sort of expecting to play or even get on 
on the pitch and uh, to celebrate with the fans. It was special. I do like playing there and, and hopefully this can be a, another special occasion. And diverted into Edwards' path. He doesn't score, but Scott Sinclair does. Well, I've got a lot of criticism at the moment about saying I'm off form, but I think I've scored 15 goals and 11 assists so far. So uh, if, if that's out of form, I don't know what is in form. But at the same time, I think when you do pick up all these gongs and, and these are personal awards, it comes with expectation. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm happy with that. Uh, I'll never shy away from pressure. I think uh, for me, it's just to keep going, working hard and not really let any sort of criticism or anything stop me in my tracks to, to keep doing what I'm doing. And has there been a bit of criticism on him, do you think? Yeah, of course. He, obviously, he's, he's well aware of it. Uh, you know, you don't have to go too far without listening to a few rumbles in the crowd. You see what's on social media. And like what Scott Sinclair said there, it's, it's the expectation. He came into the club and hit the ground running. It was absolutely sensational, scoring goals, creating goals. It was a breath of fresh air and I, it took Celtic to the next le level in terms of attacking. But now, because he's not doing it every time he gets the ball, people start asking a few questions and I think it's very unjust because, like I said, the, the, the stats that he's still hitting, goals and assists, that's his job. He's, he's ticking all the boxes what he's being asked to do. But people in the stands, people that are, are putting him on this pedestal of excellence, require it every single time he gets the ball. And, you know, me and Chris was at the game at... Easter Road when we, we thought, you know, his, his first four or five minutes didn't really look mm. sharp, he weren't direct, he looked lacking confidence, laying the ball off very simple, mm. then second half comes out of the block, scores goals. I and it's just because of the way he's been, you know, from last season. Yeah. And then even the start of this season, you know, he, he, he was scoring goals right away and then he had that wee dull patch there where he never really... But it's because he, he's somebody who gets, you know, the fans off their seats. Yeah. And a lot of times he would just take the easy option and pass it back. And then, you know, at, at uh, Easter Road that day we had said, can you go in behind? Can you just run away from the defender? Yeah. You know, he'd done that at the start of the second half, then he goes and gets a couple of goals off the back it. So, you know, from a, from a football fan point of view, that's what you want to see. You want somebody who's going to run away from somebody who's going to go on the ball, get you off the edge of your seat, and Scott Sinclair definitely does that. Yeah, and of course, players like him, and as a very, very key, as you mentioned, squad rotation and the competition for places when these games come thick and fast as well. I think also, Scott Sinclair, his form has been maybe criticised a lot. But I think a lot is because of James Forrest this season. Yeah. Right. Because James Forrest has yeah. been the one who has stepped up to the mark. You know, I think he's on 49 goals for, for Celtic so far. If he scores today, it's his 50th goal. Mm -hmm. That's another landmark for him. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a great achievement for somebody who, you know, even in his early stages of career, was criticised for not being, you know, where he was going to go and what he was going to do with his Celtic career. But he's knuckled down under Brendan Rodgers. He's another one who's took his game to another level. And I think a lot of the criticism that Scott Sinclair has had this season has been because um, James Forrest has done so well. It's not like... Scott's playing bad. He's not. He's not no. doing. You know. He's not making mistakes. It's just not. Perhaps getting you on the edge of the seat. What he did last year. But look, he's, he's still scoring goals. He's still one of Celtic's main threats. But I agree with you, Chris. The fact that James Forrest is playing, you know, the best footballer in his career is. Uh, is putting a little bit more pressure on Scott. Yeah, he's got his own reputation to keep up with, and Hearts trying to keep up with their Edinburgh rivals. They're unbeaten in their last five. They're looking to cause an upset against the formidable foes of Celtic. We'll have the first half action next. Well, Celtic's lead at the top of the Scottish Premiership it was cut yesterday to two points with Aberdeen beating Hibs and of course a Hearts victory today. That would put them just a win away from their neighbours here in Edinburgh and in the table. Well, they've dropped already more points this season than all of last season. Could there be chinks in their armour? Let's get a quick prediction from both uh, Chris Boyd and Chris Commons. Boyd? I can't see anything other than a comfortable Celtic win today. Same here, yeah. I think it's going to be a comfortable evening for the boys. And I think, I'm going to say 5-0. Griffiths with two. Gosh, are you going as bold as that? No, Come I'm not on. going as bold as that. You know, from, from, from a Hearts point of view, you know, they've, they've got a couple of players on the bench, you know, Stockton and Kinkawis, that they can bring in if they stay in the game um, towards the later stages and maybe try and nick something later on. Right, let's see if they can do it. Andy Walker's alongside Ian Crocker, who are your commentators this afternoon. Thank you, Hayley. Celtic are on the brink of making it 70 domestic matches unbeaten. It's over to you, Hearts, to have another go at ending their seemingly never-ending domestic bliss. Hearts have actually strung together a five-match unbeaten run themselves. Three successive draws followed by victories here against Motherwell and Dundee. Well, 
when the teams met on the opening weekend. Celtic thrashed Hearts 4-1. It pretty much was a sign of things to come. This is Celtic's first visit to a new look Tyne Castle. They clinched the title here in April with an emphatic, to say the least, 5-0 victory. Craig Levine makes a whopping seven changes from the Dundee game. Only McLaughlin, Randall, Berra and Boisbon survive. Notable absentees include the suspended John Suter and the injured Jamie Walker and Arno Toome. Michael Smith fills in at centre-half. 16-year-old Harry Cochran starts with another 16-year-old Anthony McDonald on the bench. He sparkled against Dundee in midweek. Celtic made four changes in the Hamilton game with Mikhail Lustig, Jozo Szyminovic and Kieran Tierney all restored to the defence. Lee Griffiths makes only his second start in 11 matches. A Hibs fan and former Hibs player, he just loves a goal against Hart. Christopher Ayer, Stuart Armstrong and Otson Edouard drop to the bench. Near Beaton misses out with a minor niggle. So Hart's have a few players missing and it's hard enough when you're full strength against Celtic. Camp Brendan Rogers and his Invincibles make it 70 domestic games unbeaten. The answer is coming. Kickoff is next. And a new look, Tank Castle. Lee Griffiths joins the huddle. A rare start in his home city. He has scored four goals in his last four games against Hart and four goals in nine visits here to Tyne Castle. Hibs have fielded nine teenagers this season. 16-year-old Harry Cochran makes his eighth appearance, his fifth start. He has no fear, at least, just as well today. Well, Tyne Castle still delivers one of the best atmospheres around, especially when the big Glasgow clubs pay a visit. All Hibs. Hearts rather depleted today. It's going to be a big ask against the might of Celtic. Yeah, I think any time you make seven changes, it tells you that it's not a settled side at all. And I think for the young players, marvellous experience going up against the champions in Celtic. You look at the experience they have defensively in midfield and up front. It'll be interesting to see how they cope. The link of it onto this straight away, but that will go through to... Craig Gordon, back where it all began for him, at Hearts. He actually played under Craig Levine here. During Levine's first spell in charge. James Forrest having an outstanding season. Christoph Behra, back at Hearts, eight years after he left. Lafferty, an old foe. Old firm games of Celtic. The Dean's emphatic victory over Hibs yesterday cut Celtic's lead at the top to just two points, but there just seems no stopping the champions. Here's Don Cowie. Yeah, I think he saw this coming, Kieran Tierney. Tried to jump out of the way of the potential challenge, a late one, Conor Randall. A great temperament, Kieran Tierney. Doesn't get ruffled no matter how many challenges he's on the end of. This is Hart's eighth successive home match. They've been playing catch-up after the redevelopment of the main stand here took rather longer than expected. fans by giving a free kick against Lafferty and in favour of Brown. Yeah, I think it was just that pull back there. Ross Callaghan just trying to pull his jersey. Will he call him right on it? It's Callum McGregor. Fronted here by Boabin. McGregor made room for the cross, did away by Randall. Tierney. Sinclair closely watched by Randall. Yeah, you can see how close Randall wants to get to his immediate opponent, making it difficult for them. Who 
Mystic, Chavinovic and Tierney were all rested midweek. James Hamilton restored to the back line today. Offside. Something haven't been at their most convincing of late, but they still eke out the results and their epic unbeaten run. Sinclair, Tierney alongside, low centre, sticks with John McLaughlin. I think they'll be quite happy to go long here, Hearts, they've got that physical presence of Lafferty. Milinkovic trying to get alongside them. Stepped in front of Berra and set up McGregor, who has Forrest available. Just calling for a cross already. Here is 16-year-old Harry Cochran. Milinkovic for Lafferty. Milinkovic and others rushing back. Lafferty goes to ground. Just thought it was a strange run from Milinkovic. He went right over to where the ball was, didn't want to get in the box. Give Lafferty an option. And here's Lafferty taking that wide. Look at the run of Milinkovic. Why is he going towards the ball when there's no one getting into the box? A rather anxious moment there, to say the least. A chance. Rushing onto this. Randall sliding in to good effect. Yeah, he had to be sure here. It's a wonderful pass from Cham. Sinclair's got the pace to get away from Randall, but trying to cut inside allowed Randall to get that ball. And earlier, Craig Gordon just uncomfortable at times with the ball at his feet. Really lucky to get away with that. They might be hoping Brendan Rodgers looked away at that point. Not often you see a goalkeeper going for a, a nutmeg. Here's Cowie, Lafferty. Chance to shoot! Oh, we're near its intended target. Yeah, I think it gets the home supporters behind them. Lafferty did well here, not only to receive the ball, but on the turn, getting away from Shimunovic. Poor attempt at goal. You certainly enjoy it. Getting on the score sheet this afternoon. He only scored once. And that carries to the always offside. The front's up against Paul Lafferty. No, it looked a really tight call. Lafferty in a good position here. I think he's on. You can see the far side assistant. Just giving himself a second or two to think. Lafferty thinks he got it wrong. Here's Jamie Brandon. Breaks kindly now for Forrest, who has a quick look up. Picks up McGregor. He ran in for Berra. That's a goal kick. Bill Hatz will be glad to have Christoph there on the side. He's the one with a bit of experience holding it together. I think he's done really well coming back to his initial club. Touch in there and take the captain's armband, showing a bit of leadership. Vera has played every minute of every game this season. Lafferty rising with Shimunovic. Celtic's last domestic defeat was 585 days ago. For May 2016 at St Johnston. They have won their last seven league encounters with Hearts and are unbeaten in their last 18. Berra. Tinney got there ahead of Cowie. 
Olivier Cham now has Blutman ahead from Sinclair, but certainly overcook that one. And Rogers with a 100% record against Hearts. Five wins out of five. His first league match here at the start of last season was settled by a late Scott Sinclair goal on his debut. Rogers certainly got the best out of Sinclair at Swansea and has done at Celtic too. Yeah, he just needs to be careful, Kyle Lafferty. He just draws attention to himself sometimes with the amount of fouls, soft fouls. Yes, at times when these two met on the opening weekend, he seemed to be concentrating more on being the villain of the piece. Celtic Park, it's Boadam. with this throw. His first touch there, Cochrane just as it landed his feet, sharp to take it away. What a great afternoon for him, up against Scott Brown. Here's Sinclair, he scored a hat trick here when Celtic clinched the title last season, as well as that goal on the opening weekend. He has some goal scoring record against Hearts. Well, exactly the way that Hearts want to start, with a lot of the ball in Celtic's defensive third. Hearts know they will have to be at their very best today and probably hope that Celtic aren't close to theirs. annoyed with the challenge from Michael Smith earlier on. Just jumping in to Christoph Berra there. John McLaughlin with a big kick towards Carl Lafferty doing battle. And Callahan, decent opening. Yeah, he's got a decent eye for goal, Callahan, and I think he should be doing better here. Just picks up that loose ball, excellent control with the chest, then the half volley. Should really be working the goalkeeper there. Well, his dream came true as a Hearts fan when they signed him from Breath Rovers. Berra challenging with Griffiths again. Cowie's flip. for Boyata. Jamie Brandon. Blabham. Almost a careless touch with Scott Brown in and about. It was a careless touch from Brandon, but he recovered. And now he's going some. Swerving Scott Brown. In towards Cowie. Champ on hand to clear, and only to Brandon. Positive start from Hearts. Good tempo to the way they're playing Hearts. More like the Hearts of old, the way they've started here. Not afraid of the challenge in front of them. Cochrane for Brandon. Blabbin. And the shake off champ. Back. 
He's given the ball away every time Craig Gordon comes to his feet. Can't find a teammate. Brown. Forceful. And here's challenge on Lafferty. Now McGregor puts Forrest in here. Griffiths waiting for some service. And he slipped. And he stumbled at the crucial moment. Yeah, brilliant movement. Forrest getting away in the right hand side. You talk about movement, look at Lee Griffiths here. He just checks his run. Forrest finds him. He just loses his footing on this soft surface they've got here at Tyne Castle. Enjoying the physical challenge, whether it's Shibunovic or Boyata, Lafferty's right in there. Brandon. Callahan. Shadow by, guess who? Kieran Tierney. It's a corner. Callum quite happy with that. Just turning towards the byline, happy to accept the corner. The Hearts fans have liked what they've seen so far in the opening quarter of an hour at Tyne Castle. Christoph Berra having a conversation here on the edge of the area with Guam and with Callahan. We need a ball. Blocking at the edge of the 18-yard box here, three Hearts players up against the three tails. Something pre-planned here, of course. Don Carey's corner. There it goes just wide from Berra. He gets a really good touch on this Berra. I think you should be expecting one of his teammates to be hovering around the back post area just for that second ball. Berra did well just to win the first one. He did score in midweek against Dundee. Just catching James Forrest. It's a clear fill. Milinkovic, the Serbian, on loan from Genoa. James Forrest on the receiving end. Tad unimpressed. Stick towards Sinclair. Just going past them on the outside as well. Tierney again. Champ. 
Sinclair. Trapped by Michael Smith. Mostly played as a fullback, but that's rather short of centre half with John Suter suspended. So he's filling in there today alongside Berra. Brown. It's offside against Scott Sinclair. Nice touch here from Scott Brown. He finds his space. And it's Scott Sinclair who's a good yard or two offside. It was a decent touch from Brown. That's last win over Celtic. was in the Scottish Cup semi-final of 2012. Their last league win the year before, 2011 here, when Ryan Stevenson and Rudy Scatchell scored. 2-0 win, it's offside now. Against Hearts. Celtic have got that option this afternoon. Any sort of long ball over the top with the pace of Lee Griffiths, so keen to get in behind any defence. in Edinburgh where they squandered a 2-0 lead at Ips last weekend. And their unbeaten domestic record almost came to an end there. Oh, Lafferty penalised. Well, again, it's another one where he's got the hand in the face of Boyata. Willie Collins only a few yards away and yet again he's having a word with him. Tried his best to look the picture of innocence, Carl Lafferty, but... Well, it will, it will only take another foul or two, and he's on a yellow card. We stick. Champ survived Callahan's challenge. Sinclair now for Tierney. And McLaughlin will grab that. John McLaughlin, who uh, was previously with Burton Albion, taken over as number one here from Jack Hamilton, who had a shaky start to the season. Obviously putting himself about, as you would expect, but to little effect so far. won that, here's Boabin. Cochrane. Straight to Tierney. Shemunovic brings it out. And finds Tierney, often a popular route this. Switch to the other side, and Lustig. Brandon, closing down. Forrest. Robin comes across as well, but Forrest moves away 
swiftly. It's Lee Griffiths into the side netting. Well, that's a pace. James Forrest on the right hand side, getting away from Brandon and Wabin, cutting it back yet again for Lee Griffiths. Quite happy to shift it onto his right foot. Only finds a side netting here. Craig Levine may well be rather encouraged by the way Hearts have gone about their business here. Yeah, when you are on top, they're not massively on top, but when you've got a good spell, you really need to try and make it count, get yourself in the lead. No doubt Celtic will have their good spell in the game where they'll dominate. Smith taking the throw. Malinkovic hung in there. He's done a bit more than that now. Brilliant work here by Malinkovic. Tom Carey was waiting and Lustig popped it away. Great experience from Lustig there. Because this is wonderful from Malinkovic. Not only getting away from Tierney, but taking it to the byline away from Boyata. Taking Craig Gordon out with a cross. Great defending from Lustig. Yet more encouragement though for Hearts. Christoph Barrett issuing instructions here as they form a not so orderly cue. And Willie Collins having a close look at that rather congested edge of area. Just a bit of pushing and shoving before you actually get into the meat and bones of this corner. Don Carey's corner. Seemed to brush off Callahan last of all, but evaded most. Well, what happened was another ball come onto the pitch to add a bit of confusion. Just as the ball was played in, one of the supporters threw another ball onto the pitch. Here's Cochrane now. And he's done it! A moment to remember all of your life! 16-year-old Harry Cochrane has given Hearts the lead against Celtic. Fantastic stuff, what a moment for him. Showing a level of maturity beyond his years. Yet again, Celtic give it away. But to receive the ball like that, to control it the way he did, just to allow himself, on his left side, remember, to drive that towards goal. Beating Craig Gordon, a few bodies in front of him. I think it goes through the legs of Scott Brown. Fabulous goal. Tremendous moment for the 16-year-old. Wonderful stuff. That was special. At the age of 16, you certainly have no fear. And that's just as well when you're coming up against Celtic. And it's his first senior goal. It's a cracker. And it's given Celtic something to think about here at Tynecastle. And Hearts are rewarded for their excellent early efforts here. Malinkovic now. Callahan. That's a rather weak effort. Yeah, he passed up Conor Randall on the overlap. Set back for Brendan Rodgers. His team haven't quite been themselves in recent games and haven't quite been themselves here. Well, we need to answer another question. They tend to come up with some sort of answer, these Celtic players. But you consider this half side without Hume and Suter and Walker. Hughes at the back with his experience. He must be pleased with the way his team have started the game, especially. Yes, don't rule out a Celtic recovery. The Hearts have certainly risen to the occasion here. Up against it with so many notable absentees.
Hearts have certainly taken this game to the Invincibles of Celtic. A long way to go yet, of course. The Hearts have been positive from the off. Brandon. Here's Cochran again. Milinkovic, he's away from Boyata! And that is a swift reaction from Craig Gordon to prevent a second for Hearts. I just wonder if this is a pass that Cochran meant. I don't know where, I think he was trying to get it wide. But in the end, Craig Gordon comes up with a big save. Milinkovic with the short corner. Gordon and Simunovic both went for that. It's all a bit frantic for Celtic. And Lee Griffiths and Kieran Tinney conspire to clear. Yeah, I think they're just too many, too hesitant at the back for Celtic in the opening half hour. Hearts are so up for this. Celtic need to get a grip here, but they think that they will eventually, although Kyle Lafferty back on defensive duty. Well, I guess the home fans right behind them, the work rate of all the Hearts players has given them the platform to get in front here. Can they hold on? Can they build on it? Lustig with a cross. Oh, Randall, for a moment, looked like he mildly misjudged that, with Sinclair standing behind him. Boyata, who's had some shaky moments. Brown. That strike from Harry Cochran, only the third goal Celtic have conceded in the first half this season, although it happened in midweek as well against Hamilton. Linkovic has been really lively. Cochrane who scored. Callahan not afraid to shoot, but unable to find any power for now. No, he's not striking it at all, but Craig Gordon come up with a really good save there. Malinkovic. No real power behind it, trying to guide it away from Gordon. He's so close to him. But look at Boyata giving the ball away. It's nowhere near Tierney. Hats are all over it. Swarming into that 18-yard box. It's the take from Cochran and the strike, the control of it. Great to see a 16-year-old come up with that in the Scottish Premiership. That's the right, Celtic rattled. will take this throw. Cowie. Cowie not giving up on this. Brandon now. Happy to take on Forrest. Lustig is there too. And Brandon just lost his way. Well, they really have started at a big tempo, Hearts. And any time I played here for Celtic, Ian, that was always what you were told. Hearts will start really strong, you match them for effort, commitment. Eventually, you hope your better players will take over. I haven't seen it yet from Celtic. They're struggling to dominate games as we normally see them do. Lustig, oh, that's... Given Boyata a problem and Lafferty has caught him. I think it was Curry sliding into Boyata, and I think it was the conditions more than anything else here. The pitch is really soft. We've seen one or two players just lose their footing. This is a 50-50 here. When you look at Curry coming in, yeah, you can see his left foot, it just gives way. He makes that collision with Boyata. He's a bit unlucky there to pick up a yellow.
Yes, yeah, Don Carrot. First to be booked. Only a few yellow cards knocking about in these not Celtic matches. But just look at the pressure that the Hearts players are putting on the Celtic man in possession. Here's McGregor though, Forrest. Celtic can help you just like that, and that is certainly their intention at the moment. But Brandon sticking to his task. Brandon is in Rangers, new system, up against Forrest, who's having a season to remember. Town. Gregor about to turn into Malinkovic. Could put Lafferty away here. Kyle Lafferty heading towards goal. He's taking it early, but he's scored anyway. Hearts have certainly risen to the occasion. They've risen to the challenge. It's 2 0. And could this be the day when Celtic's domestic bliss comes to an end? I actually thought he'd taken it too early. I thought there was another couple of yards to gain here. Yet again, it's a Celtic player caught in possession. This time McGregor. Malinkovic plays the ball way to Lafferty. Look at the room he's got. But he realises that Sumunovic is on the cover. And he gets the shot away early. It's outside the 18-yard box, well outside. And when you get that accuracy, look at it low and hard. And off the inside of the post. Tremendous stuff from Lafferty. It's only the second time he's scored against Celtic. His other goal was for Rangers. Forrest now with a sense of urgency, and that's a free kick. Or is it? No, Willie Collins says no. And nothing much is going right for Celtic. A rather late challenge there from Lee Griffiths is going to bring a yellow card. Griffiths is not happy. He's coming over and he just wants to make contact. He slips into his opponent with the right foot. Such a needless booking. So far it's a battle out there, Ian, and Hearts are winning it. That's the big surprise. Celtic are really short in any sort of physical challenge in a game, but Hearts are winning the battle here. Fabulous first half for Hearts. Lafferty flicking that one on, but nobody really gambling. Well, look at these attempts. We're getting ten minutes before half time, and Hearts have started at a terrific pace. Working Craig Gordon, bringing out a vital save from him, but they've still got a two-goal advantage. Barata. Doesn't look comfortable. Champ. Wow. Cochran. Well, given how sluggish you've been, I wonder whether Brendan Rodgers would want to make a change even before half time. Just to get some sort of spark into the team. As good as hearts have been, Brendan Rodgers will still be thinking that a salvage operation may well occur anyway. Celtic have been in this situation in the past, not many times, but they know how to dig themselves out of a hole, although this is becoming a rather big one. Three of them round James Forrest there. Terrific work rate from the Hearts players. 
Hearts unbeaten in five games themselves, won their last two after three draws in a row. Yeah, they're definitely getting a lift, been back at Tyne Castle. Great to see that new stand up. It's gone rather better than possibly even Craig Levine had hoped for, though. I can't say that Hearts don't deserve it, really. Yeah, they've been the better side, they've been the hungrier side, the more committed side. And I haven't seen Milinkovic work as hard as this. And I think that's what happens when Celtic come to town on your own pitch. They're the champions, you raise your game, exactly what all the Hearts players have done, no matter what age they are. Extraordinary first half for Hearts. Supporters probably never even imagined this either. Forrest, Cochran in and about Brown. Brown stopped that one though from Brandon and now loose stick but not for long. Berry clears only to Champ. Sinclair. Tierney. Turns it away for a corner, but a chance for Celtic to make an impression now. Five minutes before half time. Good bit of pace on the ball from Tierney. Griffiths can out to take this. Celtic's first corner. And the Invincibles are a team in need right now. It's Lee Griffiths to take this. Scott Brown will rescue it. In fact, to let it go for the throw. McGregor. Everyone's still in there, including Moyata and Shinunovic. Vera in between. Great defending from Vera, surrounded by three Celtic players here. Yet again, he's the one more committed, focused, and wins the ball. Cochrane. Forest. Forest looking to make it happen. Griffiths found his route block though. Barbin took a chance, but it came off loose stick goal kick. He's a lucky man, Barbin. Trying to go for a nutmeg in his own penalty area here. James Forrest doing so well to try and set up Lee Griffiths yet again. But look at Barbin here. He's confronted by loose stick. Tries to make him. Super Sunday today kicks off with West Brom against Manchester United on Sky Sports Premier League. And it's followed by Bournemouth against Liverpool. Celtic were 2-0 down, it was at Motherwell and a year ago, and they ended up winning that one 4-3, what a game that was, one of the games, if not possibly the game of last season. Good touch from Milinkovic, but he came from an offside, offside position there. Up in the air from Berra, Brown's header. Randall has inadvertently knocked it into the path of Tierney. Another here nor there, though, from Kieran Tierney. Well, that's first goal now, of course. Get to half-time with a two-goal advantage, regroup. Celtic will have to come up with something in the second half. He would never rule them out, even two goals behind. Half that has flown by. Lafferty and Boyata together again. It's a good success that for Hearts. Any long ball, whether Lafferty's up with Boyata or Simunovic, he's given them a real problem. Vera has to deal with this. Lee Griffiths chasing down McLaughlin. 
the head of Lafferty. Lustig. Hearts were dearly enough to see this through to half time at 2 0. Forrest. Verratta wasn't even looking at him, I don't think. Here's Lafferty. Uh, nothing came of it. Uh, Lafferty, did he make some sort of contact there with Kieran Tierney? The other card is coming his way. He's coming his way since the off, really. Well, what's the thing to do here, Lafferty? He's let the ball run out. He's got a great deal on that. There's no real force on it at all. Possibly the amount of fouls that he's created that he draws attention to himself, a bit of a flashpoint. I'm sure Willie Collum would have asked his assistant what he saw. Callahan here, nowhere near the ball, absolutely clatters into Tierney. That's a yellow. He gets away with it. It's half time. Well, Hearts needed to be at their best and hope that Celtic weren't and that's exactly what happened 16-year-old Harry Cochran with the opener Kyle Lafferty with a fine finish too the Invincibles up against it Hearts 2, Celtic nil. Welcome back one standout stat here at halftime is that Hearts are beating Celtic two goals to nil. They have the majority of the possession, more attempts, and those two shots on target with huge celebrations for the second youngest scorer for Hearts and Harry Cochran. What a start it's been for him, but I tell you what, what a start it has been for Hearts. I mean, how do you put into words what they've managed to pull off against Celtic? Oh, it's been unbelievable, but it was right from the start. You know, I think that what they've tried to do is Tyne Castle is a small pitch at the best, you know, anyway, but you know, they've, they've, when Celtic have had it on one side with Forrest, Cowie's tucked right in, they've not allowed Celtic to move it from one side out the other, because that's where they're really good at, when they isolate um, Sinclair, when they isolate Forrest. Forrest is a bit more success against Brandon, but, um, you know, Hearts have made the pitch as narrow as they possibly can, Celtic can get their, their game going, and Hearts have been terrific this half, terrific. Well, Cochrane's goal was terrific, but what about looking at the, the bottom left of your screen with Don Carey coming in here, the unseen commitment from the corner. Talk us through what you, you see here, Chris Commons. Well, you can clearly see what Craig Levine's been implementing in his training regime this week. And just watch Don Carey, he'll come into the picture just now. His work ethic, his desire to go and put him under pressure. And this, there were signs early on in the game when Craig Gordon nearly ended up giving the ball away in his own six-yard box. They put him on a high press. Celtic have not been at the races, take nothing, nothing away from that strike, it's a wonderful strike. But the fact that Celtic's downfall is the fact that they're trying to play in the areas where it's not on. De de defensively they're all over the place, they've been second in the challenge, and ultimately in the middle of the park they've been bullied, and they've been bullied by a 16-year-old. Brendan Rodgers will be furious with the performance that that Celtic team should put in. It's I think why this is why Hearts have come into so much criticism. You know, as soon as they come back to Tyne Castle, this is a Hearts team of old. This is a team that's up in your face, stop you playing, especially here, because it's terrific to watch. You know, when you know when, when Hearts have had successful teams over the years, they're big, powerful, strong guys. Kyle Laffley has epitomised that today. I thought he's been excellent from the world goal. Milinkovic on the, on the left hand side as well has been um, un, unplayable sometimes. You know, you can you can see here the amount of time Celtic still trying to play through when the pitch has not been great. McGregor unaware of what's on there. Which the, the as we press. see, as we see na making the pitch narrow, Kyle Lafferty does ever so well to, to keep himself on side and what a strike. And by the way, it could be more because Craig Gordon's had a couple of magnificent saves as well. It's a great first touch from, from Kyle Lafferty here and a great finish. I enjoy scoring that goal, of course a former Rangers man, wasn't he? 
Yeah, you know, I think, I think. Uh, Andy said in commentary, I mean, I think that's his, his, uh, his second goal against Celtic, you know, so, but today, I think Kyle Laffett has been, the, you know, he has been the main player for Hearts, he has epitomised everything they've done, they've been at them, you know, and with Celtic playing the back three, it's allowed them to spin into the channels, and that's when Kyle Laffett is very, very strong, we've seen it with Northern Ireland in the past as well, um, you know, when he plays that lone striker and he spins into channels, he can cause teams problems, and he's definitely done that today. Yeah. What on earth is going to happen with Celtic in the second half, do we envisage changes? Yeah, I think he's got to change, I think at the minute he's playing three in midfield, and, you know, Lee Griffiths is pretty isolated up, up front, so I think he's got to go for a a forward two, I think Moussa Dembele will be introduced and get, you've got to come out of the blocks quickly, you've got to try and get after this Hearts team because they really are, you know, showing that they are better than Celtic at this minute. Yeah, so it is Hearts who are leading the league leaders. And for viewers watching on Sky Sports main event, coming up next is Super Sunday, that features West Brom against Man United, followed by Bournemouth Liverpool. The second half of Hearts Celtic continues on Sky Sports Football. Well, we have a festive feast of football for you. We'll be back on December the 27th at 7.30 for build-up and all the action for the Edinburgh Derby Hearts host Hibs. And then another derby coming from Glasgow is Celtic host Rangers. Half past 11, also on Sky Sports Football, our last live game of the year. And right here at Tyne Castle Park, it has been a dream start for the hosts. Here's Cochrane now. And he's done it! A moment to remember! All of your life! 16-year-old Harry Cochrane! Oh, Lafferty heading towards goal. He's taken it early, but he's scored anyway! Okay. Just uh, awaiting the changes in a moment, just to make you aware. There is an alarm going off in the main stand right here. Nothing to worry about. Action will resume for the second half. There's been a, a power outage in the main stand, so a few problems uh, here. But it uh, looks to be a, a double substitution. Unsurprisingly, as you mentioned, you thought that was going to happen. But is it a surprise who is coming on, Chris Commons? No, I think Stuart Armstrong is more of a natural goal threat than Enchami. He brings a lot of energy, fitness levels. And he's going to have to put in a really good 45-minute performance. But in terms of Moussa Dembele, he'll be looking to come on, do what he does best, score goals, get his team back in the game. What kind of rallying cry will we have heard from Brendan Rodgers at half-time, Chris Boyd? Well, it's something he's not had to do yeah. too often, especially his time in Scotland. But, you know, from a Hearts point of view, um, you know, everything's, everything's good so far. And they'll be looking for more the same in the, in the second half. They'll at least get something to hang on to now as well. Well, only the second time this season they've been trailing at half-time. They managed to pull a draw out of that one at St John's, and I wonder if they can do it here at Hearts. Let's take you back to our commentary team, Andy Walker and Ian Crocker. No wonder that Brendan Rodgers has shuffled his pack here, Kieran Tierney and Olivier Chan going off. Stuart Armstrong and Moussa Dembele coming on. Celtic nowhere near their high standards in that first half. Not even remotely close. Yeah, back three now, Lustig, Shimunovic, Boyata, Sinclair, a wide man, James Forrest, a wide man, and that goal threat now of Armstrong from midfield, and of course, Dembele as well as Griffiths. Forrest, delivered. Here is Shiminovic. Celtic need to do what they did the last time. They were 2 0 down, and Motherwell ended up 4 3 winners. It proves they are capable, but it's going to have to be some second half comeback for Brendan Rodgers if they are to retain their unbeaten domestic run, which currently stands at 69 matches. Armstrong making progress here considerable progress Forrest Forrest still able to deliver Sinclair it's blocked by Randall quite touch from John McLaughlin 
Look at Forrest here and the cross. McLaughlin is scrambling at the back post, but he gets a vital touch with three Celtic players behind him. Chile came back off Sinclair. Again, but it's Shimunovic who wins it. Shimunovic, another uncomfortable moment. Milinkovic to make it three. He does just that. It gets better and better for Hearts. And it really looks. He's got his head in his hands, and no wonder. What a howler this is. It's a nothing ball. Shemunic has got it under control there, but once he lets it bounce and try to take a swipe at it, completely misjudges the ball. But credit to Milinkovic. He keeps his composure. He doesn't hit it here. He gets it away from Gordon and then slips it past Lustig. It's a really calm and composed finish. And at the start of the second half, wow! Hearts of three up. David Milinkovic has his first goal for Hearts, so does Harry Cochran. And this is beyond Hearts' wildest dreams. Forrest. McGregor here looking to get his shot away. Dembele does, but it's diverted for a corner. I think if there is inspiration, it will come from James Forrest. He looks lively. He can go past players. McGregor and Dembele here just trying to work a shot away at goal between themselves. Pressure still on. Griffiths to take this. Carried away by Michael Smith. now well if Celtic come back from this <laughs> they might as well be invincible forever the thing is you still wouldn't really rule it out Celtic determined to keep this alive Brown Lustig, Heracles. Lafferty. Shemunovic preventing a Hearts counter attack there. Armstrong. Straight at McLaughlin. And Lafferty is down. You know, these Hearts fans in front of us just looking at Wabin giving the ball away. And Armstrong getting a pop at goal. Look at him here, he's so casual, slack. Armstrong finding an on goal. Lafferty's got a problem, I don't think he'll recover from that. Seems to be his hamstring. But Milinkovic, you must credit his composure here. Easy to have a pop there, but he's read everything well, takes another touch and then slips it past the diving Lustig. It's such a lovely goal. Linkovic. Extending Hearts lead to 3 0. A scoreline that nobody saw coming. Or even got close. Well, he's had an excellent afternoon. Kyle Lafferty. Is he trying to play on? That's it. We do have Ismuk and Salvas on the bench, Hearts, if he can't continue, but he's giving it a go for now. He's back on. You know, not often you see John McLaughlin, two of his kicking. You can carry it some distance. Got it. Armstrong. Lustig. Boyata now. 
Randall got a touch, Sinclair will accept a corner, the Sultan look for a route back into this game. I think Randall would prefer that. The alternative was Sinclair getting to the byline, driving into the box. Sarinovic made the error on the third goal, McLaughlin's a bit lucky there. Well, he's had a bit of luck sometimes, my goodness, he gets it there. He's nowhere here, McLaughlin, that touch is poor. And it just falls into his arms as he stands up. Something haven't been at their usual convincing selves of late, but even so, nobody expected anything, anything like this coming against a heart side that is rather depleted, remember, not, not that they're really showing it today. No Suter, no Walker, no Jew. And now Catley chasing this. Brown two. Brown's clearance goes only to Harry Cochran. Robin. Randall. Lafferty was onside as well. Celtic rather mystified. Dreadful defending from Lustig. To stand there claiming for offside for two or three seconds. Go and do your job, go and defend. Daddy with a flick. Seems at any time a Celtic player gets a ball under control, he's got at least two, sometimes three, Hearts players all around him. The Hearts fans are milking this scoreline, and you can't blame them for that. They haven't beaten Celtic since the Scottish Cup semi-final of 2012. They haven't beaten them in the league since 2011. Some position they are in here. Sometimes, I mean, you've got no option here. Sometimes the best plan is to get a couple of young players into the team and see if they can give them a lift, and they've certainly done that this afternoon, none more so than Cockrell. Looked like it might have come off Sinclair, but Celtic got the throw. Here's McGregor. Forrest and Griffiths available here. Griffiths! Bringing the best out of McLaughlin. Brilliant strike from Griffiths. Generates so much power on his left side, and it's a terrific save from McLaughlin. Should actually have been a heart's throw in the build-up before that, but anyway, here's Griffiths to take this corner. Hearts standing firm, sitting very pretty, but knowing full well that one Celtic goal could spark something for the Invincibles, who might not be invincible for much longer. Cowie into the path of Jamie Brandon. will be on for that. McGregor aiming to release Sinclair. Look at the desire from everyone in the maroon shirts, Michael Smith that time. Yeah, he's playing as a central defender this afternoon, but terrific reading of the ball in behind him. And Bally. McGregor's cross took a little deflection, gathered by McCochran. Yeah, that was Cochran just getting a block in, took the sting out of the cross. He's getting through a tower of work, Cochran. The 
was rather close to McLaughlin when he kicked that. Jamie Brandon, who's only 19, feels quite old in this team, Matt. Seen a few Celtic players slipping this afternoon. It is a really soft surface, long studs required this afternoon. Boyata for Sinclair. Forced back by Randall. Sinclair did well. He has it back now. Will there be an opening here for Celtic? Sinclair, McGregor, and McCoughlin covers again for Hearts. I thought the pass from Slinker, Sinclair was just slightly heavy. It's a great run from McGregor. But maybe a yard or so less on the ball, he'd, he'd have been able to do something better with it. Lafferty. Shminovic let it bounce. But Boyata was able to tidy up. Can't let it bounce. The ball has travelled 70, 80 yards. Shminovic can't read it. Can't read the flight of it. Lucky to get away with that there. Shminovic able to guide it back this time to Craig Gordon. staring at their first domestic defeat since May 2016, two seasons ago, 585 days ago at St Johnston. Dembele. Forrest, able to tee up McGregor, Brandon clears. Sinclair, Griffiths pointing to where he wants it, Sinclair, McGregor, Brown, Sinclair! Summing up Celtic's day so far. He's trying to take it to the side of the foot, and the ball falling to you like that inside the box. Normally you try and generate a bit of power, he's going for placement here, trying to get it away round there up and away from McLaughlin. It's a strong attacking force Celtic have, Dembele's up there, Griffiths beside them, Forrest on one side, Sinclair on the other. Randall, Callahan here, Milinkovic, has been a very lively presence, Cowie. In some amount of space here. This cross was screened by Brown. Harry Cochran still going. Brown still there. Intricately done by Lustig and Co. Dembele, lovely layoff for Sinclair. Got Smith onto it. Well, he's done really well, Michael Smith. Read a few situations well, timely intervention, just clearing it, Rose Ed, allowing his teammates to regroup here. Celtic have the best part of half an hour to save their extraordinary unbeaten domestic run. 69 games. Armstrong. Forrest. Shaking off Brandon. It's come to Sinclair. Dembele. Turned away by Callahan. Good defending again earlier at the Smith, this time Connor Randall. Celtic were to score reasonably early, they've been Smelling a comeback, but an error from Lustig.
Well, they nearly saw their long domestic unbeaten run ended in Edinburgh last week at Hibs, who stood clear off the line. Maybe it will end in Edinburgh after all. But in the corgi part of town. Mr. Belly in space. Sinclair available. Sinclair. Corner. Excellent again from Conor Randall. He's hardly got time to get it under control there, Scott Sinclair. And Randall's right on top of it. We're just giving a rallying cry to the Celtic fans at that end. As he prepares to take this corner. Griffiths delivers. Brown charging in. Lustig. Just out to Callahan and actually found the link of it. What a run Cowie had made there. Celtic throwing men forward here. Belly looks like Sinclair in here. He does. Griffiths not able to do much with that. Again, not happening for Celtic. Sinclair, the heavy cross into the box. Griffiths can't get near it. Celtic have scored in their last 61 league matches since a goalless draw with Dundee in April 2016. No sign of a recovery yet at Tynecastle, though, where uh, Hearts roared into a 3-0 lead. So many men forward, sometimes it's a front four, a front five. Celtic are vulnerable to the counter attack. A side is actually given. I think Levine uh, wasn't sounding too confident himself about this game with the few players missing beforehand. But boy, how the team have responded here. It's Boivin requiring some treatment here. I think it just tells you there's a lot of talent. And despite the injuries and suspensions they have to the likes of Zoom and Suter, Walker and Hughes, to be able to turn to the likes of Cochrane and Randall and Smith, Callahan. Feel a bit of talent here. For Sunday today, West Brom against Manchester United on Sky Sports Premier League now, followed by Bournemouth against Liverpool. But we have the best part of 25 minutes to go here. And there is a breaking story developing with Hearts leading Celtic 3-0. And the Rodgers hoping for an epic recovery here. is having to go off. Anthony McDonald really impressed here in midweek against Dundee when he made his debut. And like Harry Cochran, he is only 16. It's really great to see a couple of 16-year-olds on the pitch up against this quality of opposition and showing how much they can handle it, how comfortable they are in this environment. Hobson and one will be coming on for Celtic too. And so he took charge of that situation. Maybe Cochrane with a sore head. And Woody Collin will check on him. Cochrane, by the way, becoming Hearts. Youngest ever league scorer today. Dave Bowman was younger. But his goal was in the League Cup when he scored. It's just the sheer strength. And Carol of Armstrong getting a bit of a in there. 16 year old Anthony McDonald is on. And Watson Edward coming on to replace Callum McGregor for Celtic. 
Edouard scored a hat trick against Motherwell. And Frenchman on loan from Paris Saint Germain. So Edouard, Dembele, and Griffiths all trying to spark a recovery here for the champions and the treble winners and the invincibles. Lafferty latching onto this. Lustig could turn that away before Milinkovic could get near it. Well, Griffiths seems to be the focal point of attack yet again. Dembele's the one who's coming short. Edouard trying to get beside them. Forrest still the one who's wide and Sinclair on the other side. This time Celtic found themselves 3-0 down. Scottish football was five years ago at Rangers. They actually came back to 3-2 that day. Dembele, Armstrong likewise on Randall. Randall's throw for Lafferty. Tony Brandon making a real good effort to get there. Colliding with Lustig, duly dealt with it. Armstrong, Dembele. Sinclair for Dembele. Dembele. Going a fair old way, but goal kick is the outcome. I think, yeah, again, it's Michael Smith. I mean, Dembele's up at full pace here. But look at what Michael Smith does. You see him backing off. And then just that burst of pace to get a touch in. Got a bit of help with Christoph Berra, but Smith is the one who defensively has been tremendous this afternoon. Hopefully he'll recover from that knock he's picked up there. Since of the walking wounded and the uh, not so walking as far as Harry Cochran is concerned, he's gone down again. Not the youngest ever league scorer. Got things going in some style today. A terrific hit too from Kyle Lafferty. And then that shocker for Shiminovic allowed Milinkovic to make it 3-0. And there are 20 minutes for Celtic to save themselves. Just a game to remember for Cochrane. From earlier this season against Rangers, he looked slightly lost, trying to get to grips with the pace of it, the demands of it. But this afternoon, he's been everywhere. Scoring such a wonderful goal, playing such a big part. <laughs> Smiling at the uh, Celtic fans there. Here's the other 16-year-old, Anthony McDonald. Milinkovic. Nobody really right in the middle there for Hart, so Shiminovic can clear. Kyle Lafferty is about to be replaced by Cole Stockton as Harry Cochran returns to the field. There's another Hearts man down now with this, Lafferty, I think. He's about to be replaced anyway. Well, I don't think it could have been his hamstring earlier on. It's amazing that he's, he's lasted this long if his hamstring was bothering him earlier. Uh, Lafferty will be replaced, but he's certainly made his mark upon the Rangers man. Well, it's just down to accuracy. Corbin can't get anywhere near it. He in and off the, the post. Absolutely loves this goal. And just his general level of performance here has been absolutely terrific. He's been excellent. Carl Lafferty. He's been replaced here by Cole Stockton. Hart's most used sub this season, coming on for the 11th time. Yet to score for Hearts. I haven't seen anyone work the likes of Shmunovic and Boyata this season, the way Lafferty has done this afternoon. Tremendous stuff. Connor Randall to take this throw. 
Milinkovic certainly played his part as well. Well, what you've got now is Hart setting the standard for the rest of the season. They've got big games coming up. A couple of Edinburgh derbies. Randall. Certainly been no weak point in this Hearts team today. Even though they're missing some of their more experienced players. Edouard, Armstrong, Cowie, all the way past Scott Brown. A little late, but not by much on Randall, nothing really in it. Nothing in it at all. Hearts fans desperate just to get him into trouble. He's just been second best this afternoon, like the rest of his teammates. The story here today is the Hearts' performance and the Hearts' commitment and the Hearts' passion. Much better, more superior to that of Celtic. Shemenovic gifted it to Cochrane. Sent back by Michael Smith. Wasted high by Lustig. Christoph Berra made it his, and his forest. Sinclair. Hearts resolute. Brown picks it up, though. Armstrong. Shaminovic. Away by Berra. Milinkovic now could put Stockton away. Oh, Stockton unable to control it. Looks like Celtic might have caught up with him anyway. Yeah, I just wonder if Cochrane's going to last. I think he's running on empty at the moment. Sinclair, Dembele. Hearts oh, determined to protect what they have. Up against Celtic, 1 0 is never good enough. 2 0 isn't sometimes. 3 0 might be. 4 0 could be even better. It's Callahan. And it's a penalty. Gordon takes him out. And they could have four yet. Well, what a pass from Milinkovic releasing Callahan. I thought his touch here is a heavy one. But Gordon's committed. He doesn't get it. He takes him out. Willie Collins made the right decision. It is a penalty. They're all looking towards the bench to see who should take it. Milinkovic wants it. Milinkovic has already scored. After Simunovic's howler. It is David Milinkovic! with a bit of conviction. Milinkovic taking the responsibility, side of the foot, low, hard, away from Gordon, and Celtic's misery is complete. Hearts have been by far the better side this afternoon. It's just astonishing they have scored four. What a team performance. Hearts have had everything Celtic haven't had today, and that is so unlike them. But there have been a few warning signs lately. They've not quite been 100% Celtic. So a few might have thought a defeat might not be far away, but not on this scale. No way. 4 0. Celtic absolutely blown away by Hearts.
Lustig, Celtic. So lacking confidence at the back. They've been shaky from the start. And Armstrong's passes off key. And the Hearts fans are rubbing it in now. And you can't really blame them for that because the other clubs in Scotland have been waiting a while for a day like this. Everyone's had a go, everyone has failed. It's Craig Levine's Hearts who are finally bringing Celtic's long domestic unbeaten run to a shattering end here. Last time Celtic were 4-0 down. That's it mirrored in Tony Mowbray's last game in 2010. I think one of the biggest aspects of the afternoon is Hart's commitment, getting close to their opponent, really aggressive, really strong. And every Celtic team that I came here with, you would tend to match that. I'm amazed that Celtic have been so short in that department this afternoon, never mind the skills that they have in certain players. Lyndon Rogers, Celtic, well and truly beaten, and we haven't been able to say that until now on the domestic front. Second best from the start here. Hearts have been magnificent, but Celtic have contributed to their own downfall. Here's Armstrong. Sinclair. Dembele. Armstrong. Gathered by McLaughlin. Yeah, Armstrong. He's shaping up as if he's going for the far corner. And to the side here, comfortable save from McLaughlin. Ten minutes to go. Michael Smith meets that. He's made a few things today. Well, you think of all the better players in the pitch this afternoon. Smith's one of them, Cochrane the other. Berra has been terrific. And just the work that they've all got through in every area of the pitch. Not so long ago, Haas might have been rather wary of a uh, double date with Hibbs in Edinburgh Derbies in the league and the cup. Not now, you suspect. Bring it on. his way in here, great skill, flicking over the shoulder, chest control, onto the thigh, end product not quite there. Prior to today, Celtic had only conceded four goals on their Scottish Premiership travels, they've just gone and let in four in one humbling afternoon at Tyne Castle. Milinkovic is on the hat trick. Now the bamboozled himself there. Yeah, he's just going for a bit of showboating, entertain the home supporters. Why not? 4 0 up. And Boata 
getting needlessly involved here. A sign of Celtic's immense frustration. Not a position they've been in for a very, very long time here today. Well, when you're four down, just keep your composure. Don't pick up needless yellow cards. The game's gone. Just see it out. Christoph Bear has come up. He fancies getting in on the act here. Not many in the box. Bear will still fancy his chances. Malikovic takes. Bear has got something on it, perhaps. Armstrong away. They've been smiling on the domestic front since the middle of last year. Santos on his way. Hans are going to make a another change, but not just yet. Rafael Zenit will be coming on. It's offside here against Edward. Ross Callahan will come off, and Rafael Zilla will come on. Made his first appearance since October against Dundee midweek. Each and every Hearts player has been absolutely outstanding today. Yeah, he's another one. Callahan coming from Ray Rovers up against a really strong Celtic midfield and shown that he can compete as I said earlier that's upset the standard for the rest of the season now the bar is pretty high for them Armstrong, Griffiths. No way past Michael Smith this afternoon for any of these Celtic players. An extraordinary collapse from Celtic here. Stopped in his tracks as everyone has been in hoops today. Junovic stopped him nearby. Lustig. Randall. Smith. It's going to come to Edward. And he has put it wide. Yeah, it looks as though they're not even going to get the joy of a consolation goal, Celtic. Randall there and Smith getting into a bit of confusion. Falling perfectly for Edward, but poor connection, poor strike. I think the one thing you've got to say about Celtic is it's truly remarkable to have gone this length of time without defeat domestically. It just shows you all the challenges that they've met in the previous 69 games. Absolutely fantastic, but well beaten today. Michael Smith there once again. Hearts fans refusing to give Stuart Armstrong the ball back immediately. Edouard, away by Zelak. Edouard again. Barra clears.
Dembele. Griffiths. Brandon has held him up briefly. And Randall and Smith still have time to sort that one out. Dembele. An awful effort after some clever control. And Celtic will be glad to hear their full-time whistle here. And lick their wounds and regroup and go again, as I'm sure they will. Exactly, you have to go again. That's them lost again for the first time in 17. And certainly there's still so many challenges to be met. Securing the title again. Scottish Cup coming up. And, of course, the European front, trying to make some headway in the Europa League. with a foul. Do Hearts fancy a fifth? And he's the poor afternoon, Shemunovic. Milink Milinkovic was the one, just sharper to the loose ball, getting in front of Shemunovic. Hearts won't uh, commit too many here, but Christoph Vera once again is rather keen. are getting greedy, fancying a fifth. Anthony McDonald looking for his first goal, but it was always rising. Here Gordon, beaten four times on his return to Tyne Castle and Craig Levine's hearts. Just haven't let go of this game from the first whistle. Yeah, I think he'll enjoy it, Craig Levine. He wasn't happy with Brendan Rodgers at the start of the season, commenting on the structure here at Tyne Castle. John Daly had a few words to say about it as well. Yep, I think they'll be remembering that now. Brown for Armstrong. Stockton. Milinkovic. Just for a moment, looked like he might sneak in there as he hunts a hat. Still running strong and into the last minute of the game. Cheerio, the message from the Hearts fans to the Celtic supporters. Four minutes of stoppage time at Tyne Castle. Celtic's 69 match on beaten run in domestic football has come to a crushing end here. Griffiths. Again, McLaughlin's in the way. Everything seems to have gone pretty much straight at him. Yeah, Grey's like, I think, just at the edge of the box, taking the sting out of that shot from Griffiths. Thoroughly comprehensive win for Hart. Hearts fans thought they'd see a home win today. Those who did might have gone for 1-0 rather than 4-0. Some went for 5-0 the other way, who was that? <laughs> so they could be one and truly sent packing here. Domestic defeat for a year and a half, and what an absolute tasting it's been. The Hearts fans might be hanging around Tyne Castle on this Sunday afternoon to wallow in the glory of this, the immense glory. Sinclair. And Hearts once again get bodies in the way. Did so well to cut inside there, Sinclair. He shot a goal, blocked. Absolutely no luck for him.
keeping the ball. Well, Celtic have been overly near it today anyway. Lasted the pace here. Milinkovic. McDonald. <laughs> Celtic's domestic bliss is over. It was a fantastic run. You can only beat what's put in front of you, and they have mostly done that in stylish fashion, to be fair. They've been an excellent watch. Far from that today, though, the complete opposite of the standards they set before. Maybe the warning signs have been there of late. Okay, given against Stockton. Well, the January transfer window, really upon us. I'm sure Brendan Rodgers would try and do some business here, strengthen the team for all the challenges ahead. Celtic, Brendan Rodgers will be saying to them, how does this feel? You've lost the game, the opposition enjoying it so much, I think you need to remember that pain, and you start another run. The Invincibles run ended here. They're in a huddle, but for most of the afternoon, they were in a muddle. It ends at Tynecastle. Hearts 4, Celtic 0. Be interesting to know the words that Brendan Rodgers was telling his side there, who gracious in defeat congratulating the young goal scorer there as well it is a run that has come to an end very interesting to hear from brendan rogers which we hope to do from soon and also the manager victorious as well things are certainly looking up in their new home at tyne castle it certainly wasn't the result that we predicted here in the studio maybe the scoreline but perhaps we were thinking it was going to be yet another celtic win well, the party at Tynecastle is in full swing. Are we starting to see chinks in the armour? Well, this is how things look at the top of the Scottish Premiership. Celtic losing points. They've lost 13 points now. They've only lost eight all season. Just two points separate them at second place Aberdeen. They do still have a game in hand and for Hearts and their neighbours in the table and here in Edinburgh, just three points separate the two sides. The live 
action on Sky Sports. Right now, West Ham hosting Manchester United. Uh, West Brom, I should say, hosting a Manchester United Sky Sports Premier League for the uh, first half of Super Sunday, which then continues at Bournemouth, who host Liverpool. Quarter past four for that one. And the football action continues throughout the week. On Tuesday, there's the quarter-final of the Carabao Cup. Manchester City are away to Leicester from half past seven on Sky Sports Football. Same time, same channel on Wednesday. Bristol City host Manchester United. What a win we've witnessed here today. We'll be getting the thoughts from Chris Boyd and Chris Commons coming up next. As a teenager sets the stands alight. It really was magnificent hearts. Christmas celebrations here with hearts beating Celtic 4-0, making sure that four of those five shots on target went in and restricting Celtic to just four shots on target. The visitors did just edge of possession but were well and truly beaten. Chris Boyd and Chris Commons looking but quite a remarkable game but more so a remarkable result that we absolutely didn't predict, did we Chris Commons? I certainly did not predict that. You were close. I'm very yeah. close. Very close. No, I mean, it was a, a result that not, no one would have even predicted that. I don't even think anyone would have predicted Hearts winning, but the, the manner that they yeah. went, went for it was a real, real credit, not only to what Craig Levine did in the week leading up to the match, but are they and then implemented it on Celtic. It was uh, really was men against boys, even though they had a few kids in their team. I mean, so much credit to the, the commitment from every single Hearts player. Yeah, it was to a man. You know, all over the pitch they were excellent. We'll have a few journalists have to change their opening lines because it's Invincibles no more. But, yeah. um, you know, fair play to, to Hearts. It could quite easily have been, you know, even five or six because they're totally, in terms of Celtic, really, towards the end they had a couple of opportunities. But, you know, from, from start to finish, Hearts were, were excellent and by far the better team on the pitch. Right, let's get some reaction from Hearts. We have Harry Cochran, who's alongside Captain Christoph Berra with Luke Shanley. Gentlemen, very well done. Christoph, where did that come from? You know, it was, it was always going to be a tough ask. Uh, we had a lot of injuries, but everyone who, who put, came in stepped up to the plate. And, you know, um, for now, who ever thought that? You know, everyone wrote us off, and it just shows you what hard work does. And um, I think we pressed them for the majority of the game. We made it very difficult, and uh, they didn't like it. So. I was going to say that pressing early on. Is that something the manager stressed to you? Yeah, he just said, you know, he'd rather go and have a go than sit back and try and be tactical and be uh, compact, you know, we might as well just go and get in their faces and we've done that and um, uh, they found it very uncomfortable. But, you know, credit itself that they've been on a great run and they're still a great team. So much has been made of some of the youngsters coming in. What about this man next to you? <laughs> he, after, just before he scored his goal, I told him he should have shot and uh, he must have took that advice on playing. It's a great strike, he's a 16-year-old, you know, and a good lad as well. If he keeps his head down and keeps, it, and keeps on progressing, he's got a great career ahead of him. Harry, talk us through that goal then. Oh, well, as he says, he's just told me to hit it and I thought... I came in the end of the box and there's no pressure on me, so I thought I need to hit it. Back foot as well, so. <laughs> you didn't look at it. Uh, what was it like playing against Celtic and, and going in there as a 16 year old? So much has been made of, of your age. Oh, it was tough, I Scott Brown, great player, and started to get cramp at the end of the game there, so just delighted we've got the result and need to keep it going. For you, do you have to, to make sure you just keep the head and keep working hard? I definitely can't get carried away with it. I need to, need to just keep performing as I did today, so. Hopefully there's more of that next week. 
Well, well done. Uh, we can't give you the champagne because of your age, so Christoph, I'll give it to you and uh, hand that to David Milinkovic, please. Cheers. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you. Vintage by the time he gets to open it in a, in a couple of years. It was a vintage display, you'd have to say, by Craig Levine's the team who joins us uh, now. I mean, my goodness, they said you had a game plan. You were absolutely going to go for it. You, you did that. Just what are you feeling right now? Relief, uh, as always, after a match that you win. Um, but I was obviously very pleased. Uh, I think around about the 89th minute, I thought we might actually win this. So, um, yeah, it was a huge amount of effort put in by the players today and have been working really, really hard for the last seven or eight weeks. So uh, that was a just reward for, for the effort they put in. And just how proud are you because these players are so young coming up against, we saw Harry chat about, you know, the intimidation of the players like Scott Brown and the Celtic side who have that Invincibles tag behind them. Um, well, they're good players. Huh? They wouldn't be in the team if they weren't. I mean, they, uh, I've said regularly over the last week or so that, um, that they're probably playing a little bit earlier than I would have envisaged. Um, but they've, they've been doing well in training. They've been training the first team since summer. And they don't look out of place. Um, the thing about the, but particularly Harry and, uh, um, and Anthony is that they, they love the ball. They love playing football. They just want to to show off all the time, so um, I can't remember what it was like being 16, but uh, <laughs> they're certainly having fun just now. Was there any difference in your training regime leading to this big game? We watched the, well, I watched the Anderlecht game, um, and I thought Anderlecht pressed them exceptionally well and, and really knocked them off the stride, so we were trying to copy that, that was the, that was the game plan. Well, that's a big gamble, isn't it, really? When you, when you do go after players, because they yep. are good enough to pop it round, yeah. but I thought today, was probably the best I've seen from the Scottish side put Celtic under pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, it paid off because Celtic's defence started to make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, I mean, any player who gets pressurised, as you know yourself, and, and you don't get time to look up and, and pick mm -hmm. a pass, it, it feels uncomfortable. And uh, the message today was try and make them as feel as uncomfortable as possible. I know what it's like in here when, we, you know, when we're playing well and the supporters get behind us and uh, we're having the new stand and more supporters in. Um, if, we, if we could do that, then... I didn't think we'd win 4-0 in all honesty, <laughs> I had a plan to, if we got in front, maybe try and be a wee bit more defensive, but I think the, I mean, a lot of things went right for us, the Celtic weren't at their best. But, so uh, in terms of patching good. things up during the week, you obviously had a lot of injuries, different. how impressed were you with Michael Smith today? Uh, he was exceptional, he really was, I mean, he's, he's, I don't know if he's played centre-back bef before or not, because uh, I didn't give him the opportunity to say no, <laughs> um, because we didn't have anybody else, I mean, Aaron was on the bench, but the plan was if he... If we were one in front with five minutes to go and maybe needed another defender, that would put him on. Um, but Michael uh, saved Aaron the trouble of getting warmed up. You, know, you spoke about attacking Celtic right from the off. I thought in the forward there was Milinkovic and, and Lafferty were excellent. Yeah. Was that, you know, especially Milinkovic, the way he took the ball in. And was that, well, it's obviously pleasing to see, but you know, how pleased with you, were you with it? Um, he, uh, David's a fantastic player. He, has, he shows in moments just how great he could be, but he's, he's very inconsistent. I thought today was by far his best performance. Um, his work rate was exceptional, and uh, even in the last 10 minutes of the match, he's still bursting forward trying to, to score goals. So, yeah, he was great, but I mean, I can't single anybody out in particular because uh, it was a real team performance. Um, and I don't know, we'll have a look and see how, how far they've run today, but it's, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's pretty far. Well, we're going to single somebody out, <laughs> Cochrane, in terms of his age. Well, yeah, how good was he? I thought he was excellent, yeah. I mean, he. He, we, we do play a lot of the, the better academy kids up a year and sometimes more than a year, sometimes two years, just to get them in the habit of moving the ball quickly. Yep. He, he has realised through, through that, that that when the ball comes to him, he can't take you know, a dozen touches and, and look good. He's got to pop the ball off fa fairly quickly so that he doesn't get caught on the ball. I mean, he's caught a few times, but not too many. Um, he's naturally competitive. Um, and he likes to play forward. That's what I was about to say there. You see there the assist that he gets. The you know, amount of times youngsters come into a team and they like to keep the ball go side to side, they go backwards. You can see right away the f his first thought as soon as he gets it is forward into the strikers. Yeah. How pleasing is that? Well, that's what he is. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, that's not me. You know, that's what he is. You know, he's encouraged uh, in the academy to play forward, to, to pass the ball. Um, and not everybody's got that range of passing that can do it, so that's why he's encouraged to do it. But it's him. You know, that's what he is. He's a, he's a technical uh, football player. and. OK, he's in the first team a little bit early, we all understand that, but he's certainly not doing, uh, he's not, certainly not doing himself any harm, and he's certainly not doing the team any harm either. He seems very fearless as well, doesn't he? But what was the talk at half-time when you were 2-0 up, having to keep your side calm and, and having to come back out into the second half and have more of what you'd already shown? 
well, the question was, could we do it again in the second half? What, what had we done well? And they told me what they'd done well. And then I said, well, can you please do that again in the second half? Thank <laughs> um, <laughs> you, <laughs> um, And, you know, we started the second half fairly well. Celtic changed their shape, but we thought about changing shape, but we thought things are going reasonably well. It would be silly to, 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 do, to do that at that moment. So, and I, the, when I find out how far they've run today, and, and most of it was done in a defensive sense, high up the park, and, and that is really difficult to do. Um, I've given them a few days off, first time for a while, so mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure they'll be in good spirits tonight. And what message does this send to the other Scottish Premiership teams who are going out there to, to face this side that are not invincible anymore? But I, I've got to give a huge amount of credit to Brendan and to, to the Celtic team because they've been, well, they have been invincible, haven't they, for 69 games. Uh, there had been little signs in recent weeks that maybe they weren't quite at it. And I said yesterday and the day before that, that we have to be at our best and Celtic have to come off it a little bit for us to get, to get a chance of winning the game. And I think that's what happened today. You didn't allow them to come off it either? Mm. We, we had the intention of pressing, we did that. How long we could last was, was important. Um, but I think getting the, the third and fourth goals at the moments we got them gave the players, all they were depleted, the energy was depleted, it gave them another lift and managed to keep them going as well. So. But overall, it was a very pleasing day. Yeah, it was. It was a really good one to watch as well. Thank you very much uh, indeed. Uh, let's get some more reaction now from his opposite number. Brendan Rogers is speaking with Luke Shanley. Brendan, how tough was that to take? Listen, first of all, congratulations to Hearts. I thought they were the better team. I thought the first half in particular, uh, they were physically better than us um, and thoroughly deserved their lead. Uh, and congratulations to them on the victory. So it was a very good win and, and they were clearly a much better team today. But also I want to say congratulations to my players because to go through 69 games um, and, and to taste defeat for the first time domestically today, it's an absolutely phenomenal achievement. And for them, yeah, we weren't very good today. I think we could have played five games today and would never have scored um, the first domestic game where we haven't scored a goal um, and like I say we, we, we made too many mistakes today to, to warrant getting a, getting a result but um, I'm proud of the players in terms of everything we now press the reset button we'll analyse the game like we always do and then uh, and then look to uh, look to our next game to get a victory but like I say congratulations to Hearts they get the win and deserve the win. Is it easy to forget how good a record it's been because what will what people will make of today and is that what you said to your players at the end in, in the huddle to congratulate them on that? Yeah, absolutely amazing achievement, you know, to have 69 games and to think they've only experienced that once over that period. Um, it really demonstrates their level of professionalism and, and quality and like you say, because there's so many games, you've seen it, I've seen it my time up here and we see it in football in general, coming off the back of Champions League games or, or European games, you can go into a, uh, another game and uh, and very easily lose it. Um, but these players have stood up to that. Today we um, we, we weren't so good in our defending, you know. So uh, so clearly we we conceded the goals and they were soft goals from our perspective. But um, but like I say, it's uh, it's a big thank you to the players for what they've done. And like I say, now we get the chance to press the reset button and uh, and look to get three points during the week. Is that more frustrating, given you made the changes at half time, hoping to get the impact and the reaction, and then you concede so early? Yeah, yeah. I think that, and we started the second half bright. But we obviously put risk into the the game. We were two 0 down, so we wanted to go and get something from the game. Um, and in that opening period, we, we started quite bright. You know, put some energy, put some physicality uh, back into the team. And um, but then we give a give away a poor goal, and when it gets to three 0 okay, the game's still there. If you can get a goal. Um, but uh, but we couldn't quite manage that. Just finally, do you learn any more about your team and, and defeat yeah. for the first time, given it's a, a new experience? Mm -hmm. Always, yeah. I think there, there's always lessons, whether you win or win or lose. And, and of course, for the players, it's a sore one and it'll hurt. But I said to them in there, we, we it's been a remarkable run to sit here and for me to stand in front of them and talk about a, a defeat. In, uh, for the very first time domestically, it, it really shows how well that they've worked. Today wasn't our day. Hearts deserve the credit. They were excellent in the game, physically better than us, in, in particular in the first half. Um, and we made too many mistakes to, to win a game of football. So, uh, so we we move on. We appreciate your time. Pleasure. Thanks. Yeah, Brendan Rodgers, very gracious in defeat. We can't forget 
this record. I know a lot of the focus will be on the fact that they've been beaten. I guess it's the, the manner of the defeat as well. But we've got to congratulate them for getting to this point in the way that they've done and providing so much excitement, waiting and waiting for that next team to finally beat them. I mean, it was always going to come. You can't play football matches without getting beat somewhere along the line. So, But that's why Brendan Rodgers is one of the best. Very, very humble in defeat. And, you know, he gave a lot of credit to Hearts, said they were physically better than them said they were a better team and deserved it. And individual mistakes cost Celtic today. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, he'll be wanting to have a reaction next week. How much will it hurt, though, 4-0? Yeah, it will hurt to, to lose your unbeaten run like, um, the way they did today. But, you know, I forget, you know, for me, it's, it's done me, it's finished. You know, I think today belongs to Hearts and we should be speaking about them because, you know, right from the start, right from the off, they set the game, they set the tone, the tempo, everything. Um, and for me, you know, today's, today's day was, was Hearts. You know, there's no doubt about it. They were excellent to a man, I'll say it again, all over the pitch and totally bullied Celtic mm -hmm. right from the start to the finish. Is it a bad time to set the reset button, though, with a busy period? You've got the old firm coming up as well. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly got to be on the mind. But Brendan will, you know, they'll be back in training tomorrow, they'll analyse the game, they'll, you know, get opinions from all the players and then they'll move on. The professionals, they're used to winning games. This is just a wee blip and I fully expect them to get back on the winning streak next week. OK. Well, let's have a look through the action, starting with this first goal and a magnificent uh, first goal as well for this uh, youngster coming from the corner and talking us through what happens here. Yeah, it was, you know, Chris touched on it at half time, you know, Hearts right from the off, the high press, you know, they could have had a goal before this as well, but, you know, when you look at Don Kelly sprinting across the box here, but, you know, with Tyne Castle the way it is and so tight, um, you know, this is probably what Hearts wanted. You, know, you can see they're right up in them, stopping them playing, Randall up there, right up, Kieran Tierney, um, and then and the next thing, it's a fantastic ball in, touch from one foot onto the other, and, and a fantastic strike that gives Kane Gordon, um, no opportunity. You can see there he opens his, his body up there. Um, you know, we've seen this man sit next to me a few times from there, and it's a fantastic strike. Just one thing in his mind, out his feet and get a, a shot on target, which for a 16-year-old boy to do that in a big occasion is phenomenal. He's shown real mat maturity in his performance today. I thought he was excellent. Yeah, he was. Super. Couldn't fault anything he did. Uh, Craig Gordon was perhaps at fault for, for some of the mistakes a little later in the game, but did pull off this incredible save, which could have put Hearts again 2 0 up, couldn't he? Yeah, and I say uh, just individual mistakes. Celtic were clearly not at the races, but again, it's, it's a high press. It's putting defenders under pressure. Dirk Beata getting caught underneath the ball, but yeah, it could have been 2 0 very, very easily. But this is just the first 29 minutes of the game, and it, right from the word go, they put Celtic under pressure and they clearly did not like being put under pressure and they were their own worst downfall because they were still trying to play out from the back. Like Chris said there, Craig Gordon could have got caught in his own six yard box with another pass back. They just played into the hands of Hearts mm. where sometimes you've just got to have a plan B and say, listen, it's not on, we're going to clear his lines and let's play in there off a little bit. Because I think as a Hearts player, if you're putting pressure on defenders and they're clearing it, mm. you do then start thinking, I'm just going to ease off a bit. Then the space gets bigger, but which I think never did that. As well, though, you know, when, when Lee Griffiths does play up front, it doesn't allow you to go you know, long as well. You know, that's how he's probably, uh, Brendan's probably f uh, preferred the other two in recent weeks because you know, with the team's trying to come on to Celtic, stop them. if they do want to go long, the physical presence of if, if, uh, Dembele, if he plays as you can get it up, it sticks to him. Um, you know, Lee, yes, he can back him, but you know, he's disappointed today, but um, I'm sure he'll pick himself up and go again. But you know, they're talking about a goalkeeper, the Craig just makes himself as big as he possibly can be. And you know, for any young goalkeeper, it's the best way to be because, yes, he doesn't really have a clue about it, but if he makes himself as big as he can possibly be, um, you know, he's got an opportunity to save it, and that's what he's done. Right, talk us through the seven goal uh, former Rangers man scoring against <laughs> Celtic. He hasn't done that very often, has he? He'll enjoy no. this. He will, yeah, but this is, you know... Again, the press. You know, that's, that's yeah. what we're talking about. You know, Hart's made the, the, the pitch as small as he can possibly be. You know, you must say, Kyle Lafferty, magnificent keep yourself on there. Some of which I don't know why he's coming away and he needs to stay with Kyle Lafferty. You know, there's already bodies around there. Scott Brown boy is getting back. There's no need for Savinovich to come back in there, but what a fantastic strike from Kyle Lafferty. You can see there right behind it. I think if it's a ball inside, Craig Gordon makes a save. Yep. So it's, it's, it's pinpoint accuracy, real, real good. But again, another defensive error from Celtic in terms of positioning and tactical awareness. This is what we've not seen in the last 69 games of Celtic. They've always been very defensively minded, very tactical, and usually pass teams to death. Mm. This was, time, they pa they, they'll make you pass It was interesting and what Craig said mistakes. in terms of what they had done in Europe, watching yes, Celtic Europe. That definitely. was very interesting for me because when you look at Hearts was similar to that. You know, we'll let them play and then bang, we're on the, the, the second ball. And they picked up everything. So Celtic never got any. Did the pitch have anything to do with it? Maybe. But you know, I, you know, hearts all over the pitch, picked up every second ball, every and second you know, and never let, won. never yeah. let Celtic sell at all. Yeah. 
Right. How important was this third goal, which came so early in the second half? Because it could have been very different, couldn't it? Well, you're looking for a reaction. You're looking for a reaction, first of all, of from your players that you brought on. And you talk about a ball in behind. Another mistake, another costly error. But the awareness, he comes inside, he's in no panic, he's not rushing, he's a man in confidence, he faces up the goalkeeper, and it's a beautiful little shift to the left, and then exquisite finish. But that's it. 48 minutes you're thinking, right Celtic, reaction, made substitutions, let's go and get after them. And another costly error has led to another goal, which, what Brendan said there, individual mistakes have cost us the goals. Well, you know, we, you know they obviously made the, the, the two substitutions at half-time, and they had that little opportunity just before, I think, Hearts broke away there and scored, but, you know, when, when you look at the... the, the a lot of people in this league will criticise teams going long, but that was a you know a, a curved ball up the line for it allowed the, the two strikers to go in. But yes, it's a mistake. But mm. you know that you had two forwards breathing down his neck, and it, it, you know as soon as he gets in there, it's a great finish. And I thought Milinkovic was.